In today's communication-centred economy, employers are looking for people with a good GCSE in English. The problem is that only half the boys will get a high grade in GCSE English, compared with two-thirds the girls. So what can we do about improving the boys' performance? Girls are now doing better than boys in every single subject and the most dramatic difference is in English language. Now the problem is our economy has changed. The muscle jobs, loading lorries, digging coal, they've gone. Today's employers come from the service industries and the media. They're looking for people with good communication skills and that tends to be the girls. Professor Deborah Myhill of Exeter University is an English specialist, one of a small group of researchers who've studied the lower achievement of boys over a period of years. The problem, and I put the problem in inverted commas with boys under achievement, is that in our examination system, boys are lagging behind girls in their results at every stage, right through from key stage one to GCSE, particularly in literacy and English. And at GCSE, the gap is around about 15%. Internationally, we do very well because our boys and girls are at the very top of international league tables, but we do have a problem with a tale of underachievement. So um, we have more children who do less well than children from other countries, and more of those children are boys. The bad news about boys' lower achievement became clear in the late 1990s, when national exam results were analysed. Out of 150 local education authorities, in only one did boys get better GCSE results than girls. One of the things we found was that there was a direct relationship in terms of the achievement level of the child and the level of participation that they made in the lesson. So high achievers, both boys and girls, were much more participatory in the lessons, whereas the underachievers, both girls and boys, were more likely to be off task, more likely to be disruptive, less likely to put their hands up and less likely to be invited to answer a question. Professor Myhill works closely with schools to see what can be done to improve things in the classroom. You might think about, do I have high expectations of all the children in my class? Do I stereotype or do I uh, treat children as individuals? Do I use an active teaching style so that I'm not asking children to sit and listen to me too much? Do I try to get all children involved or do I unwittingly allow some children to disengage and not participate? And do I use formative assessment so that I help each child to know what they need to do next in order to improve? If you do all of those things, then you'll actually be helping the individual boys in your class who are underachieving to move up. But you'll also be tackling the underachieving girls who are often overlooked. Here are three things you can try out in your classroom. First of all, try and relate the interests of the boys to what they read. For example, that might mean more sport, adventure, comedy and non-fiction. Secondly, help the boys be more meticulous in what they write, otherwise some of them simply slap down the first word or phrase that comes into their head. And thirdly, make sure the laziest beggars actually do their coursework, because if they don't do that, they're sunk before they've even started the exam. <laughs> <laughs> 